Hi, my name is Dr. Richmond Lowe and I'm the fish vet. Today we have a planned revisit of George R. Moray eel. Uh, before, if you saw the previous video, we we're suspecting that he either got spiked by his tankmate Fluffy, a lionfish, or he might have suffered uh, from gas bubble disease from a faulty or leaky pump whereby it was um, sucking in air and producing a lot of gas and causing supersaturation of the water and the gas sort of become, um, gets evolved or comes out into the bloodstream, creates emboli, blocks different um, blood flow to different organs and organ damage and probably neural deficits as well. A couple of days after we first saw him, uh, he didn't show much response to the treatment, uh, but we persisted with giving him the Valium and anti-inflammatories and we saved him from what could have been a, a euthanasia on that second visit. This video clip shows George nine days ago before treatment. It took George several days to respond positively to our treatment protocol. The clinical signs and slow response to treatment indicates that George is most likely suffering from gas bubble disease as it takes several days for those bubbles to begin dissipating from his body. And you can see George's um, a snout and everything is sort of healed up very nicely and evenly. Uh, there's no signs of redness or infection. Uh, it's a good thing that we gave him the antibiotics so it fended off any bacterial infection and that could have led to septicemia. Um, so together with the anti-inflammatories and diazepam, um, that all worked in combination uh, to get him to where he is at the moment. If you saw from our previous video, uh, the treatment course we gave. Now here is George nine days after our initial visit following injections of diazepam, anti-inflammatories, antibiotics and B-complex vitamin. And we're doing a clinical assessment now to see how he's responding to the treatment. We've just floating a piece of food uh, near him and you can see that he's very alert, he's responding to the food item and he's got very fine motor skills. So he's just looking around, possibly looking for a pat from the owner perhaps. Um, so he's showing some interest in the food but not quite eating as yet uh, but that's not such a big problem uh, because he no is normally fed in the evenings and this is early in the morning that we're seeing George. Unfortunately, George hasn't taken his food this time, but we'll ask the owner to offer him food on a daily basis at his usual time in the evening. And together with appetite stimulants, such as garlic juice, aniseed oil, fish oil, and krill oil, which will encourage him to eat sooner. Okay, so we just come have a look at the filter, the sump, and check out what exactly could have caused the problem. Um, so in here we had the uh, water pump and it was sucking in air and that was going through this long tube all the way up to the water and into the tank. And when you have gas uh, being sucked in uh, through down here and if it has a long way to travel through the pipes, um, that gas will actually dissolve into the water and create a gas supersaturation. So in terms of uh, nitrogen gas supersaturation or air supersaturation in the water uh, with George, his medical condition is very similar to divers suffering from the bends. With humans, you can actually go into a hyperbaric chamber where they increase the pressure around you, try to put whatever gases that have come out of your bloodstream uh, back to dissolve it back into the bloodstream so that it doesn't block your blood vessels and then slowly release the pressure as the gas gets consumed or moves on or moves out of your body. Uh, in a fish situation, um, there is no hyperbaric chamber available. So another thing that I've thought of, of how to make a hyperbaric chamber is actually with your weed killer type pump sprays. Um, so what you do is you would have your fish sort of swimming in there. You could oxygenate it, put an air pump inside. You'd have to get something large enough and then you can just sort of increase the pressure, the air pressure by just pumping this um, thing here. So I think this, this might work for small fish. 
but it wouldn't work for something as big as George. So if you have any ideas on how to make a, a DIY hyperbaric chamber, I'll be most interested to, to hear from you. Uh, so make sure you put your comments. While we're on the subject of gas bubble disease, I thought I'd share with you some video clips of other fish I've seen with gas bubble disease. Here is a long fin trevally and in severe cases of gas bubble disease, it accumulates in the soft tissues behind the eye. Here is a wet mount preparation of a gill biopsy from a fish affected with gas bubble disease. You can notice the little gas bubbles forming within the blood vessels. Now here is a histology view of gills from fish affected with gas bubble disease. You can see the blood cannot go past the gas bubbles and with this sort of sluggish or blockage of blood flow, it can cause degeneration of the tissues due to poor blood supply. In my experience, gas bubble disease tends to be more prevalent in some species more than others. If you've experienced gas bubble disease in your fish, please note down in the comments below to share with us what species were affected and what tank system you had at that time. George, when he was first bought eight years ago, was only about 20 centimeters long, eight inches. Uh, yeah, about that size. And now he's grown to 1.7 kilograms and he's basically the main pet of the house. Um, and Fluffy is, I guess, George's pet. <laughs> uh, you can see that George is now very well recovered and he's behaving normally and showing a little bit of interest in food, but not quite yet. So uh, now the next battle is to get him to start feeding. That's all from me. Um, and from George and Fluffy. Uh, make sure you like, subscribe and share uh, to get updates of our future videos and have a fantastic week.